Hey guys, I just got this new collection from ColourPop in the mail, so I thought we could do some swatches and take a closer look at these new palettes, and these are going to be launching, from what I've heard, at Ulta on December 25th and on ColourPop's site on the 26th. I'm not 100% sure on the dates, but once I find out for sure, I'll go ahead and leave the dates down in the description box. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. <music> First up we have some super shock shadows that go with the two palettes and I'm not sure if any of these are new or if they're all existing. They actually didn't include one of them in my package but on the card that they sent it said that it's Mountain Lion which I already do have so I can swatch that for you guys. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these first. So here's a quick close up of the two shades that go with the Petals and Point palette. We have In the Saddle and then over here is Mountain Lion. And then here's what these look like swatched. This one is a beautiful peachy pink with a gold shift. And then Mountain Lion looks white in the pot, but it actually has a beautiful pink shift. And then the two green shades that go with the Sage the Day palette are Corsage and Fringe. So Corsage is a beautiful sagey green, and then Fringe is kind of like a gold with an olivey undertone. Next, let's take a look at the palettes, and this one is such a beautiful light pink color story. It's really gorgeous. It's really soft and ethereal, and I think it goes so well with the ballet theme. Okay, so I think I like this one even better swatched than I did in the pan. I love the addition of this sagey green in here because I just think it's going to pair so beautifully with the pinks, and it kind of gives Natasha Denona retro vibes a little bit, or like the Lime Crime Venus XL too. It's a really similar color story to those. And then next up we have Sage the Day. And as someone who really loves green eyeshadow, I love this one. I think this is gorgeous. It does remind me a little bit of The Child from ColourPop. So I'm curious to see how similar this would be to that. But I do see some differences as well. For example, The Child doesn't have a shade quite like this one. So anyway, let's take a look at some swatches. All right, so this one actually has two duochrome shades. It has this one right here. It has a brown base with kind of a teal shift. And then this gold right here, I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it looks like a gold in the pan and it shifts to a green when you actually swatch it out. So this is just a gorgeous color story. And I love that they gave us some neutral crease shades or you could do the green as well. So you could either do like a fully green look or something that has a neutral base and just a little pop of green on your lids. It's a really versatile color story. I like this one a lot. Next, I just want to do some quick swatch comparisons between palettes that I think are really close. So first we have Sage the Day versus The Child. Looking at the two side by side, I feel like there are a lot of similarities here. There are a few shades especially that jump out at me as being really close, but let's go ahead and swatch them and see what they look like swatched out. Okay, so I wasn't able to find any exact shade for shade dupes between these palettes. There are a few shades that come kind of close, like this one and like these browns and greens at the end, but a lot of the shades in the Sage palette have a little bit of a different undertone. I think they're a little bit greener, and the greens in the Child palette almost look a little bit more like bluish greens. So they're definitely close, but not exact. I still think, though, if you have the Child palette, you might feel like this one is too similar. Next we have the Dancing Green palette from Essence. I also thought this one looked really similar, especially because of the tones of the greens in the palette. So when I swatched out the shades, again, I didn't find any exact dupes, but the Essence one also has very similar vibes going on, and it's less expensive. Granted, there are only six shades in the Essence palette and you get nine in the ColourPop, but if you do have the Essence one, you may feel like these are too similar to warrant buying the ColourPop. Next up we have the Anastasia Nouveau palette. 
And again, looking at them side by side, I did feel like there were a few shades that really jumped out at me as being so similar. The Anastasia one does have that lavender. I'm really curious to swatch these and see if they really are as close as I think they are. All right, yeah, so we definitely do have a lot of similarity here again. I think the tones are very similar, except for I would say this shade is a little bit more blue-green, and this one is just greener overall. But again, despite them not being exact dupes, I think that the vibes are so, so similar, and you could probably get a lot of the same looks out of these two palettes. And then I just have a couple more palettes that I want to show you side by side, but I'm not going to swatch them because I don't think that they're super similar. So the first one is the Sigma Ivy palette, and I always think of this one as being a green green palette in my collection, but it actually is very neutral. There are only three green shades, these three right here, and the rest are all browns. So I think the ColourPop one definitely has more of those greens if that's what you're looking for. Also the Mandalorian palette from ColourPop does have that deep green in the center. It's kind of like a teal green, but the rest is very neutral. There are some cooler tones like grays and silvers and also some warmer browns. So I really don't think that this one is super close either. And then another green palette that I have is the Michaela Glam Light palette. And I see a couple of similar shades between these two, but I think that the Glam Light one is just really rich and the colors are just a little bit more vibrant while the ColourPop one is more subdued. So I think they're close, but I would probably get very few shade matches between these two. Next up, let's do some petals on point comparison. So um, here we have the Pretty Please palette, which just launched last week. And I feel like the pinks in both of these palettes are so similar. The only big difference that I see is that minty green that's in the Petals on Point palette. But a lot of the other shades might be really close. So let's see how these compare. So looking at these two side by side, I actually didn't find any exact shade dupes, but I think what stands out to me the most is that the Petals on Point palette over here is very cool toned and it kind of sticks with that theme, whereas the Pretty Please palette has cool tones, but also some warm shades like the gold and the copper. And also this brown is a little bit warmer than the brown in the Petals on Point palette. So I think if you like these soft pinks, the palette that you choose between these two would depend on whether you like more of the cooler tones and you just want to stick with that or if you like the mix that this one has. But otherwise, I think they're both really soft, pretty pink palettes. Next, I wanted to see how it compared to the Venus XL2 from Lime Crime. Obviously, the Lime Crime palette has way more shades, but it's that same pink and kind of sagey green vibe. So let's go ahead and see some swatches. Okay, wow, so I was actually expecting these to be a bit more similar than they are. The Lime Crime palette is warmer and not quite as pink as I remembered. The pinks that are in the palette come off kind of warmer and peachier than the ones in Petals on Point, which are a lot cooler. The only green matte that's in the Lime Crime is a bit deeper than this green matte. And I just felt like even the browns are warmer in the Lime Crime palette than they are in Petals on Point. So these are definitely a lot different than I thought they were. I also wanted to see how it compares to the new Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette. I feel like the Natasha Denona has more of the green than the pink and the Petals on Point has more pink than green, but there's definitely gonna be some overlap between these two, so let's take a look. Okay, so I think this one comes the closest, but I was still surprised by how the pinks in the Natasha Denona palette are just a lot warmer than the ones in Petals on Point. I didn't think of them as being warm, but in comparison, I just think that Petals on Point is just more of those really lovely light powdery pastels while the Natasha Denona ones are a little bit deeper and richer. So again, we don't have any exact dupes, but I think you could get a lot of similar looks out of these two. And then I just want to show you a couple more quick comparisons that I'm not going to swatch because I don't think they're that similar, but this is the Natasha Denona Mini Retro Palette. Looking at the pink shades, they're actually more peachy. They're definitely not pink at all, and I just feel like the green also isn't super similar, so I don't feel like this is exactly the same. ColourPop's Blush Crush, and in comparison, this also looks very, very warm toned. So I didn't see a lot of similarities here at all. Also, ColourPop's Getting Fresh palette, I had remembered that that had some greens and pinks in it, but this one is just a lot warmer as far as the pinks go. And the greens are more of like a lime green. They're a little brighter, so I don't see a lot of overlap here either. 
And then another palette that I think of having a pink and green color story is the Sigma Enchanted palette. But I was trying to match up shades here and I don't see one that's gonna match the green and I think the pinks are also a little bit different. So I just wanted to show you guys this one as well. So anyway guys, I just wanted to show you these ColourPop palettes really quickly in case you were interested in checking them out when they launch. This is gonna be my last official Vlogmas video. So I'm gonna just be going back to my regular schedule starting next week. So I hope you guys enjoyed Vlogmas. And if you missed any of my videos the whole month of December, I'll go ahead and put my Vlogmas playlist right up here so you can check them out. Thank you guys so much. I wish you a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, or any holiday that you might be celebrating this weekend. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.